Hello, welcome to the University of Minnesota's massive open online course titled From GPS and Google Maps to Spatial Computing. I am Dr. Shashi Shekhar, a professor of computer science and engineering here at the University of Minnesota, and I'm one of the two professors of this course. Hi, I'm Dr. Brent Hecht, the other professor of the course. Yeah. I'm also a professor of computer science and engineering here at the U. Now, spatial computing is definitely a hot topic in both industry and academia. It has had and will continue to have an enormous impact in a wide variety of domains, ranging from computer science to environmental science to geography to civil engineering to, well, the list goes on and on and on. On a personal level, spatial computing also touches the lives of billions of people around the world, almost certainly including you. For example, you probably have used an online mapping service like Google Maps or Bing Maps to get from one place to the other. That is spatial computing. You also probably have done this on your smartphone or GPS device, which shows a, a little dot and a map representing your position, and that is spatial computing. Many of you have also likely used Yelp or Foursquare or TripAdvisor or a number of other location-based services to find a great place to grab a bite to eat. That's spatial computing. Many of you have also likely used Google Earth to look at present day or historical satellite imagery, either as part of a class or on your own. That's also spatial computing. Great. If you bought a house recently, you likely visited a site like Zillow or Trulia to check out information about various potential neighborhoods. That is spatial computing. If you live in a large city, you may have tried one of the new car sharing services like Uber or Lyft. That is spatial computing. Spatial computing is also changing people's lives in a large number of indirect ways. For instance, through something called precision agriculture, spatial computing is revolutionizing how farmers grow our food. Similarly, scientists are using spatial computing technologies to better track and protect the world's biodiversity. Large organizations are using spatial computing to minimize pollution and increase profits at the same time. And public safety officials are using spatial computing to reduce crime and save lives during natural disasters. The goal of this course is to help you begin your journey towards understanding how these world-changing technologies work. For those of you who decide to join the technical track, you'll also learn a bit about how to build these technologies. But we'll get to information about the three tracks of this course a bit later in the week. In the next video, you'll learn about the definition of spatial com computing and get an overview of typical problems and applications in spatial computing. But before we end this video, we want to give you a bit more information about ourselves. So a little bit about myself. You know, I was born and raised in India in a small city named Jamshedpur, also called Tata Nagar. And uh, I completed my undergraduate education at uh, Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, and then came to Berkeley at University of California for graduate education, including master's and PhD um, in disciplines of business administration and computer science. Uh, in terms of my research interests, you know, uh, they are in two or three broad areas. One broad area is spatial databases. So within databases, I worked on storage methods for roadmaps in early 90s in context of in-vehicle navigation devices. We also worked on routing algorithm. So many of the, you know, the applications we see today in terms of in-car navigation and so on were research project. It's hard to believe that these came to fruition during your own career. Uh, more recently, we have looked at evacuation route planning and now there are some projects on eco-routing where you choose routes to minimize fuel consumption or greenhouse gas emissions. Another broad area of research is spatial data mining where uh, we have essentially looked at two kinds of issues. Okay, one, uh, we wanted to balance computational scalability and spatial statistical mathematical interpretation. And uh, we have been able to provide new representations, interest measures, and pattern families such as collocations and cascade, which can do that. And the last theme in my research is high performance geographic information systems. So in starting mid 90s, we looked at uh, parallel computing and how to use those for geographic information systems. 
So we worked on parallelizing range queries, uh, neural networks, some of the other spatial data mining algorithms. So this kind of gives you a broad sense of um, you know where I come from. Again, you know, spatial is a general theme, and within that, I work more on the data analytics side. Thank you. Hey, this is Dr. Dr. Hecht again. Um, I was born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area, actually very close to Berkeley, where Shashi did his PhD work. I received a, a bachelor's degree in geography and computer science from McAllister College, which is really close to the University of Minnesota, but in uh, St. Paul, the other of the two. Twin Cities, the University of Minnesota is in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. I received a master's degree in geography from uni the University of California, Santa Barbara, um, beautiful place and a wonderful geography school. Mm -hmm. And then I received my PhD in computer science in 2013 from Northwestern University. Mm -hmm. In terms of my research interests, uh, I focus on spatial computing, obviously, as well as an, an area called social computing. And in my modules, you'll see that I incorporate some social computing um, into this course as well, where relevant. Um, a lot of my research looks at volunteered geographic information, and you'll understand that term a bit more um, when you finish this course, and its applications. So I've done a lot of work looking at, for instance, Flickr data, um, Wikipedia data, and, and uh, algorithms that you can build using, using these data sources that you really couldn't build um, before they existed. And I also do a lot of work in information visualization and geographic human-computer interaction, so uh, innovating in areas like applying some of the, the tools and techniques you'll learn in this course in non-geographic reference systems and uh, these types of things.